How's it going, Critter Family? Be nice! <laughs> How's it going, Critter Family? Um, this will be my second attempt at doing this, or maybe my third, I don't know. Um, I've been very distracted by some new little babies that I'm fostering. Um, two adorable little six-week-old kittens. I'll throw some pictures up here. Um, sweet Iago, um, as much as I dearly loved him and wanted to adopt him myself, uh, foster fail. Um, I think that, you know, <laughs> I don't think Hermes would have appreciated it. Um, and at this point, excuse you, at this point, um, you know, he is at the Noah Center and he may already have been adopted. I haven't checked the website out, but, um, you know, just the sweetest little guy. And now I have two adorable little babies. Um, I've just been calling them Humphrey and Tic Tac. Um, <laughs> I know that their names are not that. Um, it's somewhere on the paperwork, but yeah, so these are my new little adventure and an adventure they have been. Uh, her <clears throat> at least Hermes gets along better with them. Um, but they're in the background making noise and playing and being wild little crazy gremlins. So if you hear that, or <laughs> you hear me, you know, breaking up a fight, then that's that's what's going on. Um, but we are back at it with a uh, uh, Tara's newest video about her writing Bella. Um, somebody recommended it to me. I do have other videos of Tara's that I do plan on covering. But for this video, just like with any video, any review I do, um, there's never, it is never meant to be anything personal. There's no personal attack. There's, there's nothing personal against the people. Uh, you know, I'm simply just trying to, to, you know, I'm just reacting, giving you my reaction and giving you my point of view and trying to give a voice to the horse or whichever animal I'm talking about. There's no, you know, I, I wish no ill will or any attacking or anything negative towards the person that I'm, I'm talking about. Um, and in fact, I wish if anybody wants to ever support whoever I'm looking at today, it's Tara. If you want to support her, please do by all means go subscribe to her. You can go support her carrot fund or whatever they call it. Um, you know, all that. And if you want to su uh, support me, then of course that is very much appreciated as well, but you do not have to. So yeah, with all that out of the way, uh, we're using this video as with any under the Fair Use Act for education, criticism, giving my point of view, um, and, and just trying to, you know, give a voice to little Miss Bella here. So here she says, has Bella got out of the wrong side of the bed this morning? So another way that humans could put the excuse on the animal, um, that it's the, the, you know, those are chords that you don't need to play with. Thank you. Come here. Yeah, some little sniffs on the microphone. I hope you heard those. But um, <laughs> this is, a, you know, one of the things that I like to talk about is how people will, will make an excuse for... It's everybody else's fault but their own. And this and Tara is not alone in this. There's so many people. I mean, people in my own personal life, like like clients I have worked with in the past, where it was everybody else's fault or the universe's fault, the animal's fault, everybody else's fault but their own. And so that's why they're ex-clients of mine, because I refuse to work with someone who was just, just that ignorant and just chose to, you know, to remain thinking like a narcissist. So um, anyway, we're going to see what poor Miss Bella has to go through in this um, in this video today. So we have two people talking to her because we have uh, you know, mom up on top and then we have dad behind the camera. Um, we have a very tight bit. This, you know, <laughs> snaffle is supposed to be like this little bar here should be inside the mouth, but, you know, and the rings on either side, but she pulls it so much that this bar comes out on either side. So she's already throwing her head. Her protesting. She does not want to go into this arena because she knows what's going to happen. She's just telling her, Bella, stop. Can't close the gate on her own. I don't know if that's just easier. I mean, of course it's easy and nice to have somebody be able to close the gate for you, but I think that that's also another skill that, that would be helpful. She could tie a little rope to the, the gate so she can close it on her way out. It's just another good thing to uh, desensitize your horse to. Um, that, you know, they could be walking and a gate could slam behind their butt. You know, you can slowly desensitize them to that or, uh, you know, whatever. But I think that's just something that would be probably beneficial to her, um, you know, whenever she goes out on, on trails and whatnot. So Bella's, you know, either snorting or she can't breathe and she's coughing and she's, um, you know, the bit's just causing frustration already. So she was already throwing her head. She's still just irritated. All right, sorry, the, the little babies <laughs> went and pulled onto some kind of wire. Um, being crazy little babies. Come here. <laughs> so again, really throwing the head, stomping, gives her a one right, uh, one looks like the 
eh, looked for the most part like a one rain stop, although there was still a lot of tension on this rain. Um, her hand went really far behind, like basically on her hip, to turn the horse around. If she were in a, a halter, that I would, would have less of a problem with that because, you know, you're not putting any pain directly in the mouth. Um, but if you're going to be doing a one rein stop, even if, regardless of how you stop or go, when you're using the reins, they should be in a small 10 inch box. Her hands are very wide and loud moving and, you know, they're just loud hands. And they say that, you know, oh, excuse me. And they say loud hands make loud horses. Um, and that just means that, you know, having heavy, strong contact on the bit at all times teaches the horse that they only, that they only respond to um, tight, hard contact on, on their mouth. Sorry, I have a cat on my shoulder now, so. Tight, and horses don't, like, you know, mouth the bit or open their mouth a lot um, because it's fun or because they're young or because of whatever nonsense people want to tell you. They do it because it's irritating and it hurts. It's rubbing on gums, soft tissue that lays across bone, as they call the bars. Don't eat that. No, that's my cord. Thank you. So horses don't just mouth at it because they're bored, because it feels good. They're doing it because it's irritating. So she's throwing her head. Tight, tight bit. God, just look at how hard she pulls her hands up. Really, really far, pulling her hands behind herself to stop her, you know, for get more control. I mean, just it's just, I looks painful, and she doesn't realize she's causing this horse to act this way. Constant tension. I want you to think about having, you know, a piece of of like the like a cheese cutter, you know, like the wire little piece of wire used to cut cheese and things. You know, imagine having that, but it's not like serrated. You know, in between your teeth. And then having that tied back basically to some suspenders on your pants. And having that constant tension on your mouth. You don't even have to have anybody... Um, are you stuck? Alright. You don't even have to have anybody on your back, you know, pulling you. But just having that constant tension on your mouth. That'd probably be enough to make most people cry. You know, cry uncle far before five minutes. And these guys have to do this with weight on their back and throwing them off balance and none of it is natural and it hurts and no matter what they do, they are forced to comply. Ears are back, tail is active. She says slower, I don't think Bella knows at all what that means. Constant tension, she uses the reins all for balance. The saddle looks too small and that has, you know, it's just, it, it to me it just looks as, as, you know, I, I can't state it as a fact that the, it's a, a known fact the saddle is too small, but it looks, it looks like it's just too small, that there's too much pressure in this one small point. You know, usually you have wider saddles that, um, like Western saddles or, or different types of saddles that um, distribute the weight more evenly. So instead of having, you know, just say 50 pounds or 100 pounds on this one point, it's, you know, feels more like, you know, 60 or 40 pounds because it's all distributed right around here. It's still the same amount of weight, but it's not just right here on the spine. And that has nothing to do with with Tara or her body or looks or weight or anything like that. You know, again, as I've said, I have major issues. My self-confidence is basically to the floor. <laughs> and, that, and that's an improvement over the years. Okay, I have no self-confidence in my own body. That's my own issues. But I have a lot of issues about looks and the way I look and, and weight and all of that. So that has, I would never put that on anybody else. I am simply stating just for the comfort of the horse and even the rider too. You know, it's like if you're riding a bike and your, your seat is too small, that's not gonna be comfortable, you know, but at least the bike is an inanimate object. The only one suffering would be you. But in this case, we have an animal that is also, you know, could be in pain or discomfort. So she's pulling her head up, pulling her head up. I have no idea if she's actually asking her to go in these little circles or do any of this or not. I mean, there's no, no visible cue that I could see of where she's telling, you know, Bella to, to move in any certain area. I mean, here it looks like her back is really dipping. 
Usually I would expect to see a flat line, but it really looks like it's dipping. So it could be, you know, because of the saddle, because of uh, the way Terry is sitting and, and, you know, she's doing, I guess, a sitting trot. And Terry is going up and down in the saddle. And it just looks like she's just putting, you know, bouncing, bouncing on the saddle, um, which could cause, uh, you know, Bella here to tuck her spine in because it hurts and she's trying to protect her spine, which then throws everything else out of, out of, uh, out of whack. Um, flared nostrils, you know, bit tight on this side, you know, which means it's putting pressure, this round ring is being put pressure on the other side of her mouth. Just very uncomfortable. She's already foaming. She's been in here for not even two minutes. She walks sideways. I don't know what Tara is trying to even accomplish. It doesn't look like she's trying to, to squeeze her to the side, left or right. It looks like she's just trying to get her to walk or maybe trot. And I'm all for ASMR. I'm a big fan of ASMR, but if that squeaking is annoying to me, I can only imagine how annoying it is to, um, I almost said Feather, uh, to Tara. I'm sorry, to Bella. Feather is the, the oh, obviously this is Tara. Feather is the horse that I play with that looks a lot like this. She's, she's a little buckskin. Bella. Uh, coughing, probably because she can't breathe very well, or she's frustrated. Active tail, she's just... Bella. Right in, she's... she's totally ignoring the guy behind the camera i don't know why you know he even bothers but yeah. i mean i would personally rather talk to bella like that like bella or, or you know easy but it have it mean something versus just constant nagging pulling one way and then saying no and then pushing her to go another way and then saying no and you know constantly screaming at her like when i say something to a horse it, it usually i wait to make sure it means something or, you know, instead of saying their name, I just say, easy. God, this poor thing. Just tight bit. Sideways walking. See, just bouncing, 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 bouncing. Which tells me it, it seems like the horse is tucking her back on purpose. And the tight reins pulls her neck in unnaturally. And here she sends the horse into almost a panic in a rear. She's going to slow it down here in a second. Does her one rein stop where she has still has tension on this side. But then she pulls her other hand really low and really far back on the other side. Again, if, it were in a halt, if, if they were in a halter, then that... You know, I would say there's, I wouldn't have as much of a problem with that. You know, hopefully her hand wouldn't be so far back, but I mean, hey, at least if she's in a halter or a bitless bridle or something like that, you know, when you put pressure on this side, you, you are turning the, the horse into a circle until they stop. If they try to take off on you or they try to rear. But here she's using a bit. Tight. And then she yanks again. And it, it seems like that little yank there, seems like this little yank here, pop sends the horse into fight or flight and then more pop and you see her tongue sticking out her mouth open like panic eyes but she was gonna rear because you were going to make her rear she's trying to get release of the constant pressure on her mouth really low hand again and when using reins 10 inch box and i'm so tired of people constantly using the constant pressure just contact all the time like again back to you know using a you know piece of cheese cutting wire even floss even using floss and tying it behind your head to you know the the belt loop in the back of your pants walk around like that for five minutes even an hour you'll be crying Frustration, sideways, trying to get relieved of this pressure, no. going in circles, keeps screaming no at her, in other words, that Bella doesn't know and care. Just sideways step, active tail, frustration. Gosh, poor Bella. You guys are just going back. Just miserable. No. And that's where this frustration comes from. She says, I'm tired of doing these circles. Uh, 
I don't think she knows what slower means. You can use your body and, and you know, the pressure on the reins if you knew how to, to get her to slow down with just a finger's worth of pressure, you know, even on a, a halter, if you, you know, practiced enough and you made your horse light enough because you had soft enough hands, you could teach her to slow down without ever using your mouth. I mean, this looks just the same as it she ever did in the first time she was working with Bella. No difference. I'm still just as confused. And she's apparently taken her out on the road and nearly gotten hit by cars and people and wants to blame everybody else in the world. Gosh, just flaring nostrils, chewing on the damn bit. I don't know if she wanted her to go forward there. It didn't seem like she gave her any cue to go forward unless she just microscopically squeezed her, her legs, but I don't know. Go. See that? God. Yeah, the bit is tight. On the other side, she's foaming. She's chewing on it. I mean, horses, like, break and crack their teeth. They grind their teeth down chewing on these damn bits, and everybody wants to say, you know, oh, I, you need to understand how to use the proper uh, uh, equipment. You know, I have the sweet bit because my horse, it helps them want to take it more. If you have to have something called a sweet bit or wipes that taste like peppermint to get your horse to take a piece of metal in their mouth or any object in their mouth like that as an aid, I use quotation marks for that then you know what? Maybe you shouldn't be using it. I mean, so many people, they stick their, their hand or their thumb up and dig it into the roof of their horse's mouth just to get them to open their mouth so they could put the damn bit in. Like, I mean, at least there are different types of bits. Like, like there's, uh, I'll do a video here shortly on you know a, ro a war bridle where people might use like a piece of rope and tie it around the, the chin and the, the lower jaw of a horse. They might use leather in the mouth or they might use rubber bits. Like I will be covering uh, Barry Hook um, in a future video as well. And he is all about rubber bits. So if you're going to use one, then yeah, I mean, I, I suggest that you use, you know, the, the softest material possible and you learn to use light hands these are not light hands this is like a death grip you know and uh, i mean it doesn't it, it doesn't matter i mean nobody cares what i think anyway but at least if you're going to use one admit that you understand <clears throat> admit that you understand that it is meant to cause discomfort at the least and pain at the most at least if you were to be honest about that then i could have respect for you but if you act like no it doesn't hurt oh well you know what put that piece of floss in your your teeth it's not even metal it's floss so anyway, I'm just going to end that video here. It just looks like they go for circles again and again and again. And I just, I'm just floored just watching this. And I'm just, just, you know, numb out of my mind watching these circles. And I'm not even the one running them. That does it for this. <laughs> Love you all so much. Hope you all are doing well. Um, and if you're not doing well, then I hope you are doing better soon. Be sure to go give your little critters some kind of loving. Say how do you do for me. And until next time, practice positivity. I know it's not possible to, as I, I say that as these little guys are fighting, um, <laughs> I know it's not always possible to stay positive, so I want to change that to just practice some positivity. So we'll see you next time, guys.